Good morning and welcome back to our Pacific Morning Show. It's so great to have you guys back. Today we're talking about home ownership. So a lot of our, you know, that's the New Zealand dream, the Pacifica New Zealand dream is to own a house. It's pretty much a flex when you go around saying, yeah, we own a home. We, we yeah. have our own home. We're not renting. And uh, we've talked about this on the show before. Pacifica communities currently have the lowest home ownership rate, yep. um, which probably shows through our participation in political elections and things like that. But uh, we're going to be talking about how to get into your first home and also the importance of it and how important it is to be financially literate. Hi, Bear. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> Man, hi, what is your guys' experience currently with Pacifica families trying to get into their first homes? Um, you know, I think uh, a few of our audience know that I, I currently own, um, we own our own home and we've just, um, our family has just purchased or my sister together with, um, our current home has purchased our second home. Um, uh, was it possible? Uh, yes and no. I feel like, uh, there's just so many restrictions. There's just certain things in our Pacifica families that we just don't understand. And even now after owning my own home, for what, 16, 17 years, there's still terms and there's still conditions that I have no idea. It still puzzles me. And I just, yeah, I, is it possible? Yes and no. I, I, I yeah. actually cannot answer. And I think we just, there's a lot more that we need to learn mm. um, at an early stage before saying or before agreeing, yeah, it's possible. But yeah, when you, when you do the work, yes, of course, 100. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, from my perspective, only one person in my entire family owns okay. their own home. Mm. So it's really hasn't, we really haven't had those conversations. Yeah. So I, I do know it is possible. My best friend does own his home, mm. but the conditions for him lined up perfectly. Yeah. Like no bills to pay, stayed at home while working a full time job, stuff like that. Right. So it, it's possible. Mm. But for me and for what my family kind of, has as like ah oh, the dreams a bit far mm. yeah the dreams yeah. a bit distant. No, my experience is the same as Ryan. Um, a lot it's a, it's a huge dream for people who are working, and I know a lot of hard workers. You yeah. know they're working forty to sixty hours. Um, they're making an income between sixty and eighty k in um, different industries. But it's the shame that they have to talk about finances. Yeah. Like they're scared to go to a bank and like get declined from mm -hmm. mm. from the the financial whoever they're going to speak to, and then that kind of puts their spirit down mm. and then they go home and they're like, oh, nah, I don't make enough or I'd be spending too much on food or my car that I loaned has gotten me. So um, it's definitely a dream yeah. in the bus vehicle community to own a home. It's something that we take pride in, mm. but it's very hard for mm. a lot of the people in our community. So we have uh, a very special guest on our show this morning. His name is Simon Rowland and he is the CEO of Aurora Capital and also a financial advisor. How are you, Simon? Good morning, team. <laughs> I'm well. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, very excited to talk about this. Uh, helping people get into their first homes is a passion of mine. Um, and yeah, and I'm yeah excited to help you know the Pacifica community because you guys don't own homes um, and you need to learn how to buy homes. So that's mm. why I'm here. Um, so yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to having a chat and hopefully you guys and your listeners find today, um, useful. So I'm, I'm here to talk and here to, you know, answer the yep. hard questions, but, uh, hopefully we can give out a lot of information that people can take away and do something with it. Yep. So yeah. So thank you for having me. I'm really no, excited that, to be here. That's super awesome. Thank you for coming onto the show. So first of all, just give us a bit of, um, background on who you are your experience and things like that. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so um, so my name's Simon. Uh, I grew up in Titarangi, which is in West Auckland. Mm. I was saying to you guys earlier that I went to Avondale College um, and then I left school. I was lucky enough that I went on an exchange. I lived in Switzerland for a year, mm. which is like the home of finance and the home of money. Uh, <laughs> and I learned a lot while I was there. Um, but then I actually came back to New Zealand, thought I'd go to university. I uh, didn't like university. Um, dropped out and then got the first job I can, um, basically getting into being a what was a financial advisor and then I eventually became an investment advisor and then I ended up starting my own businesses. So seven or eight years ago, I set up a company called Aurora Financial. We're a company that gives uh, clients advice on insurance, mm -hmm. KiwiSaver and mortgages. 
Um, so basically we help Kiwis make smarter financial decisions. Um, so we are now the fastest growing um, in New Zealand. We've been recognized recently as the, uh, well, by Deloitte as being one of the fastest 50 growing companies in New Zealand. Mm. Congratulations so, on that, by the thank way. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. So I'm actually now a three-time winner, um, mm. which is pretty, pretty good. Mm. But we're in Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, and available obviously nationwide digitally now. We have digital advisors. Um, so that's really cool. Mm. And then actually uh, about 18 months ago, kind of as lockdown was happening, myself and a business partner, we set up our own KiwiSaver firm mm. because we thought there was an opportunity in the market to help people with KiwiSaver, help them understand KiwiSaver, realize the magic of KiwiSaver. Mm -hmm. um, and so we set up Aurora Capital 18 months ago and that's going really well. We're also just recently recognized as being the fastest growing KiwiSaver in New Zealand at nice. the moment. So mm. things are going good. Mm. Um, but yeah, you should, you know, um, listen to what I say because last year I helped 25 of my staff uh, buy their first homes. These are all people under the age of 30. Wow. Um, they mm. are not from wealthy families necessarily. Mm. They are just, you know, people who are two to five years into their first, uh, you know, real job, yep. uh, you know, not their high school job or whatever it might be. Mm. Um, and the reason we were able to help them is because, you know, I see buying home, like buying a home and home ownership, it's a game, right? Mm. Um, and, you know, like any game, if you know the rules, you can play it better. Right. Um, you know, and I will throw out this, you know, like who's the best rugby player of all time? It's Rishi McCaw, right? I just I'd have throw to that. disagree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that might not we be. We can have that on another yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay, but Rishi McCaw, right? And the reason why Rishi McCaw is so damn good at rugby is because mm. he knows the rules better than anyone, mm. right? He just knows the rules. And so what I'm hoping to do today is to help you guys understand what these rules are, because it isn't passed down to you, right? Mm. It isn't something you learn at school. Um, and you know, and like me, I bought my first home when I was 23. Mm. Did it by myself on my own income, no help from my parents. Mm. Um, but, you know, like, what do you do when you want to buy a first home? Who do you go to? Who do you speak to? Absolutely. You know? And yeah. so I went to my parents. I'll tell you the story just to kind of set the scene, right? Mm. My mum is a university lecturer. Yeah. My father is an IT lawyer. So I've got smart parents, right? Mm. And we own our own home. But, right, I said, hey, uh, you know, dad, mum, I want to buy a home. What do I do? My parents sort of looked at each other and went, well, I mean, we bought this home 20 years ago, yeah. uh, well, 25 years ago. Uh, we don't really know what to do. Mm. And I went, well, who do I talk to? So I went and talked to a real estate agent. And they <laughs> sort of told me a little bit about this and a little about that. And I'm mm. like, okay. But then I was like, well, I need to get a mortgage. So what do you do? You go to the bank. And then the bank come around to your house and they basically say, oh, how much money do you earn? How much have you had? Mm. Blah, 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 blah. And it all just went straight over my head. Yeah. Mm. The next thing you do is you get told you've got to go talk to a lawyer, right? And then the lawyer starts talking to you in a way you're like, I don't know what this is about. Mm. So I literally bought my first home completely blind. I, if you ask me to, even to this day, Simon, what was your interest rate on your first, you know, first home? <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Who was your lawyer that you used? Don't know. You know, what bank? Well, I know what bank because I had to make all the payments, mm. but it was a uh, a very steep learning curve. Mm. And, you know, and I'll put my hand up. I was one of the only people who's lost money mm. in housing in Auckland, right? Because what I didn't realize when I bought my first home is that you should have a builder's report done. Yep. Right, not just your, you know, your mate have a look at it. Mm -mm. And so it turns out I had a roof problem, hundred thousand dollars to fix the roof. Holy you crap! Know, on a single income, I've already bought the most expensive house I could because the bank said this is how much you can have. Go and get it. It was a six hundred thousand dollar house, just to put it in context. This mm. was a while ago, um, but it didn't go so well. Right. So anyhow, I'm here today to help you guys understand the rules of buying your first home, mm -hmm. understanding what I call the magic of KiwiSaver mm. because I've, you know, so I'm 34 years old now. I own six properties, including a commercial property. Um, most of my money is tied up in business though, mm. but I still know how to buy and sell right. and, you know, get property mm. working for you. And, you know, my, my friends, we're all 34 now that I went to high school with, 100% of them, own homes now, mm. and not one of them did it without KiwiSaver, yeah. mm. right? Now, yes, there is a little bit of some of them would have had the bank of mum and dad, mm. but the majority didn't. You know, we went to Avondale, wasn't super wealthy school or anything like that, but all of them had kind of been working for 10 years mm. yeah. in KiwiSaver for 10 years, and, you know, between themselves and their partner, their KiwiSavers coming together has actually given them the option of making home ownership a real um, possibility. Right. So all of them call me and say, thinking about buying a house, what should I do, what should I look for, and it's a big process. Mm. Mm. So we can start at the top, go through your questions, and hopefully at the end of this you're going, you know what, I actually can buy a house. Mm. It's not as hard as I thought. Mm. I just needed to understand the game 
so I can win. Damn, Simon, you're giving us words of hope there. <laughs> because, um, you know, know, what I was saying before, like, KiwiSaver is, we don't actually understand it to its full yeah. extent. Yeah. It's kind of like you see it on your, when you get a new job, it's like, oh, I don't want them to take too much of my money. I'm going to mm-hmm. put 3%. Yeah. Um, we don't understand uh, the different types of um, investment plans you can go into mm-hmm. that. So it's really, really important. And the fact that you're sitting here saying we, your KiwiSaver is, you know, so important to get you into your first yeah. home. Yeah. It's kind of like bizarre to us. I'd almost mm. say it's yeah. impossible without KiwiSaver. Yeah. So KiwiSaver will potentially be the biggest financial decision you ever make. Mm. And most people don't even know who the provider is. Mm. They've got no idea what, you know, what what strategy they're in. Mm. Um, and they've just got no idea why uh, the government set up KiwiSaver. Mm. So maybe I could answer that just to kind of give a bit of context of why sure. KiwiSaver yeah. was still yeah. started. Mm. So, I mean, KiwiSaver at its core is, is a um, – it's a pension fund, yeah. right, which means when you hopefully retire at 65 and you go, you know what, I've done enough, hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I just <laughs> add one thing before you go into the explanation? Yeah. Um, I saw some comments on Twitter, sorry, yeah, um, right. and people were saying if we're using our KiwiSaver for our homes, people from low socioeconomic areas, mm-hmm. what about our retirement? Yeah. If you could add that in as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. So just yeah. remind me if I, I go off track. But basically KiwiSaver – was designed because at the moment, right, when you turn 65, doesn't matter if you're wealthy or not, the government's going to give you a couple of hundred bucks a week to make sure basically that you don't starve, yeah. right? But when you turn 65 and you say, hey, and I've had these phone calls because, as I said, I'm 34, but all my friends' parents now are 65. Mm-hmm. So I get the phone call, hey, Sai, you know, I've, I've turned 65 and I'm thinking about retiring. What are my options? What are my investment options? Okay, well, the first thing I ask them is do you own your own home, Right. Now, my parents' generation are so lucky that the prices of houses in Auckland have skyrocketed. Mm. Otherwise, they would be, and I was going to beat myself, screwed, right? They, mm. would, they would be screwed without it. All their wealth, all their money is tied up in their house, mm. right? But if you do not own your home and you're 65, what's, what's rent for a house yeah, per like, week? Like 600 Yeah, 600 yeah. bucks a week, mm. right? So you still have to make 600 bucks a week, mm. Right let alone food, let alone petrol, let alone everything else, all the other bills you've got to pay. Mm. So you're never retiring, mm. right? And that's a hard thing to say. Yeah. So I've had a friend's mum call me, 65, what do I do? Do you own a home? And unfortunately her husband had passed away, you know, mm. 15 years ago, so they sold the house then. So she said, no, I don't own my own home. Mm. So she's renting. And I said, how much is your rent? And it was 650 bucks a week, mm. right? And I'm going, well you're going to have to keep working to always pay those bills, mm. right? And that's really sad. Yeah. So first and foremost, right, to, to, to retire, we want to make sure that you, you when I can call you at your 65th birthday and say, do you own a home? You say yes. So that's why the first part of KiwiSaver is designed to get you into your first home. Right, mm. yep. The second part of KiwiSaver is once we've got you into your home is to start investing and hopefully we've got time. Hopefully we've got 20, you know, or 30 years until you're 65 <laughs> um, to build up enough to supplement the pension. Mm. But basically the government said, listen, we've got this um, aging population who are all going to want pensions, right? And this is a huge financial burden on the New Zealand taxpayer. Mm. So what KiwiSaver is designed to do is to move that financial burden from the government's back pocket to all of our back pockets, Mm. our individual back pockets, right? So the idea is that you'll have KiwiSaver income from that investment pool of money that you've saved over the last 20, 30 years. Mm. Yeah. And you would have bought that house 17, 18, 19, 20 years ago, Mm. and your mortgage is basically gone. Yeah. Because if you imagine, if, you, if I said, hey, you know, um, Hannah, you're 65 now, congratulations, you have a $1 million freehold house, so it costs you nothing to live in there other than mm. rates and insurance, mm. you're getting 250 bucks a week to cover that from the government, oh, and you've got $800,000 in your KiwiSaver, that's giving you a 5% cash return, I should have done my maths earlier, but I think that's like $40,000 a year, so mm. about 1000 bucks a week, mm. so you don't have to go to work. You can live in a million dollar house and you're earning a thousand bucks a week to take care of, you know, you don't have rent, you don't have mortgage to pay for. So a thousand bucks a week. Spending money. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the live off, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to have a pretty good retirement. And even better, you know, when you pass away at 85, 90, 95, whatever the age is, well, then your kids have a freehold home. That's yeah. a pretty good start in life. Damn and that, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, man, my son's going to be <laughs> he's so lucky. Yeah. Um, but then also, out of that $800,000 you've kept over, you might still have half a million bucks left. You might have $400,000 left 
right? So that's another little pass down to the family. Mm -hmm. And that's how you create intergenerational wealth. Mm -hmm. And that's why European New Zealanders are further ahead because mm. my grandparents own their own home. Yeah. Mm. So all my uncles and aunties own their own home. Mm. Funny enough, me and my brother, we own our own home, but I do mm. have one brother who doesn't own his own home, right? Mm. And so I can understand how it is sometimes for certain people. But, um, you know, and even though they didn't pass that through, we still had that in our culture was you save for your home, get your home, that's your security. And in New Zealand, that is your financial security, right? Mm. You own your own home, no one's pushing you around, mm. right? You're still renting and you've got a family to feed, you've got four kids, guess what? Landlord says it's going up 100 bucks a week or get out, guess what? Get out. Get out, yeah. you know, mm. and that sucks, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so KiwiSaver is super important. Now, I love KiwiSaver because it comes out before you can touch it, mm. right? It's just before you see whatever shows up in your bank account every payday, it's already yeah. put aside, mm. right? But you need to know where that's being invested. You need to make sure it's in the right appropriate account, mm. you know, or the strategy. Um, and then you've got to also understand that, you know what, you might be putting in 3% of your income. Mm. That might not be enough, mm. right? And it's better that you bump it up to 6% or 9%. So yeah. I was really lucky when I was about 25 years old. I worked for, uh, well, Aurora, we pay 6% of our staff salary, mm. plus they put in at least 3 So almost So 9 almost 10% of their salary is going straight into a back yeah. pocket called KiwiSaver to save, save for their first home. Mm. Um, but, you know, so that's one thing that you can talk about is upping the contribution rate. But again, it's got to make sure you can still afford yeah. milk, still afford petrol, still afford to pay rent, right? We don't want to go broke saving, mm. but it's a good idea if you can make it go up a little bit, sure. Mm -hmm. And then it's understanding, okay, when am I ready to buy, mm. right? And this is where we also come in handy. So not only does Aurora have a first home buyer strategy, so it's literally it's a KiwiSaver fund to strategy designed to help you get into your first home. We then also have a really, really good team of what's called mortgage brokers. Now, a mortgage broker is to, like what their whole job is to do is to make you look real good in front of a bank. Mm. And that's what they are designed, like that's what a mortgage yeah. broker is there to do, <laughs> right? And so we have a team of mortgage brokers across the country who are really, really good. Maybe one day I can bring in Drew, who's our mortgage broker, to come talk to you guys. Sure. He was on Sticky TV. He's a little bit yes, famous. Yes, yes. Oh. Shout you know out who, to Drew. Yeah, I yeah. remember you. I yeah, was a yeah. child. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. He's the best looking mortgage broker we have. So happy to bring him along for you guys. Um, and then, yeah, you'll talk to a mortgage broker and their job is to say, you know, mm, you know, Present yourself a little bit differently because there's yep. tricks, mm. right? There's ways to yep. make your income look better. There's ways to clean up your accounts. But, you know, if I said today, I mean, you've just bought a house, right? Mm. So you would have had to provide, you know, pay slips. Yep. You would have had to show 90 days worth of bank, you know, statements. Yep. So there's little things like by talking to us, we can say, hey, you know, Hannah, we can see that you're paying Harvey Norman. When's that going to be paid off? Mm. We're not going to try and get you a home loan until that's paid off. Mm. You know, every time you put something on credit or, you know, you, you finance something, your how the bank sees you just pushes you further and further down the, like, the, the good looking. Mm. Mm. But what Polynesians do have uh, in your favour is that you like to live together, right? Yes. You know, you're happy to live together, mm. right? With me you couldn't pay me to live with my brothers, right? <laughs> and the first thing we do when we're 17 is we move out of home, right? Mm. So there's no way I'd want to live with my family or my brothers or my, my parents, right? Mm. But if you're happy to, suddenly you go, well, actually, I've got maybe three or four or five or even six adults in the house with full-time jobs, mm. earning 60 to 80K, like you said, right? And then suddenly you go, well, actually... I've got 20 grand in my Kiwi Saver. You've got 20 grand in your Kiwi Saver. Mm. You've got 20 grand in your Kiwi Saver. You've got 20 grand in your Kiwi Saver. And individually, you thought, oh, 20 grand, that's nothing. Mm. But you didn't realize you've put that all together. That's $100,000. Yeah. Right? And then also, you might go, oh, 60 grand, it's not a great income. But 60 times four, mm. that's $240,000. Mm. Right? So suddenly, you've got $100,000 to go towards your deposit. Mm. You've got a serviceability of $240,000, right? So suddenly things become very poss possible very quickly. Now, what we'd obviously like to do is to make sure that, you know, you don't have bad credit, yeah. right, which is always going to be an issue. Things that you don't realize, like, you know, a power bill that you used to, well, you didn't pay when you moved out of that last home and you weren't, you know, and mm. you ignored those letters to pay it because yeah. you've gone on to the next house and, you know, $200 here, $400 there, it's, you know, that will come back to bite you in the bum, you know, like mm. it's really, really, because it shows poor character, mm. right? The bank's going to look at you 
and they don't see, you know, your face. They don't see, hey, good rugby player, oh, up and coming business person, you know, great <laughs> mother. Yeah. They go, you know, they look at the numbers, income, yeah. debt, you know, and and character. Yeah. Oh, this is the sort of person who misses bills. Do we really want to lend her right. seven or eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars? Oh, this person can't live within their means, so mm. has to borrow has to borrow money to mm-hmm. buy that new couch or buy that new TV or yeah. buy that new car, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, you can either look rich or be rich, right? You've mm-hmm. got to kind of choose one or the other because, you know, showing <laughs> off to, you know, it's true, right? Yeah. Especially yeah, young boys, so we do that. We, we, yeah. We're young, yeah. we go out and we, like, tick up a real nice car, but at the same time that stops you buying a house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what's cooler, but I'd rather own a home Me yeah. too, than for sure. paying, you know, a finance company 100 bucks a week to... Yeah. look like I'm something I'm not. Yeah. Mm. So let's get into some questions. Let's sort of set the scene, right? Let's yeah. set the scene that we're going to work out how and what we need to know so we can get into the right KiwiSaver fund so that can help us build the deposit. And, I mean, do you do you, do you know what a deposit is? Mm. I think deposit we know. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. I yeah. want to explain that. Mm. Um, and then to understand how much of a deposit you need and how we can make your deposit bigger, mm. and then how do we make you look good in front of uh, a bank. Mm. And then we can also just talk about what sort of properties you should be looking to buy, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Because the last thing I want to see is we go and get, you know, a, a, a Polynesian, you know, approved for 800 grand, and then they walk down the road, they see the first house and they buy it, uh, and they don't realise that the real estate agent didn't tell them, you know, the council's just about to put a motorway through here yeah, yeah. or uh, this is about to be rezoned yeah. to a different school. So when mm. you thought you were going to the nicest school on that side of the road, yeah. turns out your kids are going to the not-so-nice school on that side. Mm. And there's things to look out for, right? There's things yeah. that make houses worth more money mm. and there's things that make them worth less money. Mm. And unless someone tells you this, um, you know, the last thing we want is you to get ripped off. Yeah. So that's also an important piece of the puzzle. And then the last piece is actually understanding how do you negotiate buying a house, mm. going to auction, or what does price by negotiation mean, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and this is when, you know, and I'm I'm not anti-real estate agents, but I'll put a real estate agent in their place uh, because their job is to sell the house no matter mm. what, yeah. and there's very little um, recourse. Yeah. You know, you can't ring up the real estate agent and say, hey, you know that house you made me buy? And you said, oh, it's only going to go up in price and it's only mm-hmm. it's only going to be a good investment, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's gone down 100 grand. It has a leaky roof. And uh, by the way, it's going to cost me another $100,000 to fix the driveway. Mm. But you you told me that not to worry about that. You told me, oh, you know, just imagine the kids running around the backyard. They mm. sold you on the emotion. They sold yeah. you on the, like, scarcity yes. of the product, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we understand that. That's, that. like, a huge problem. Yeah. Like, um, it's hard for us to build trust. But once yeah. we do build trust, it kind of, like, spreads through the community yeah and the fact that you guys have it all packaged within your company like the mortgage brokers the financial yeah. advisors yeah explaining what your bank statement should look like is yeah. really helpful mm. because um even the process of looking for a mortgage broker then looking yeah. for a lawyer then looking for this is um stressful oh, for absolutely. Families. and also we're excited to get into our new home so if we go and if we see a nice image online Yes. Bro, the whole family will be like, buy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's my yeah. room and yeah. we haven't even seen the house. Mm. Yeah. So we're going to trust the real estate agent who's going to mm. say, this house is mean, but mm. there's like mold growing and we don't yeah, even yeah. see it and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that mold is what kills you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But, but it's not just Pacifica people. All mm. Kiwis are not that good at buying houses. They're yeah. not that financially onto it. Like it's not like, don't think it's just you guys. It's it's mm. everyone, right? Yeah. yeah. Some people, yes, are very lucky. They come from a family who knows what they're doing. Yeah. Most don't. So mm. don't feel like it's just you guys. It's, right. it's it actually is everyone, um, and you know, and that's why I'm here to help everyone, right? Mm. Because I think I don't know for me, it's just fun getting people into houses, right? Mm. Um, and it's you know, it makes me feel good. Um, so yeah, so should we ask you some questions? We can get into yeah. Well, because well, Hannah's just yeah. touched a little bit on just that trust um, part, and I know I just briefly explained to you our situation when we first bought our homes. I was quite young. My sister and I just <laughs> kind of like exactly how Hannah ex- explained it. While we were forced, great, no regrets. Yeah. But it was the excitement of buying your first home. Uh, didn't understand anything. All I knew was I was going to be a homeowner. Yeah. At the, you know, young age of 19 and 20, my nice. sister and I were yeah. on top of the world. Um, but we didn't, we, 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 with that, we it created trust issues mm-hmm. um, from such a young age. Um, we had issues with uh, the people that helped us. Um, it felt like it was a scam. Yeah. You know, they were um, taking a 
lump sum from us. Mm-hmm. We didn't understand, um, you know, the terms and the con- of c- and conditions. We didn't un- understand the condition our home was. They didn't even give us a guideline of what to do. Mm-hmm. So now, yes, or we've we've had. We're past that dud stage. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, but we've had the leaky roof. Yeah. We've had, um, we've found that there's a drainage uh, on our property. You know, everything that we could have, um, that could have helped reduce um, our, you know, the value of our house. You know, these are the things that we didn't look at. Trust is the biggest thing. Mm. How do you identify a scam? Yeah. So that we don't keep running into the same issues. I mean, you know, there are people that are set up like yourselves, mm-hmm. um, but they're set up in such a way that they know how to tap into that vulnerable community yeah. and how to sell on emotions, like you said. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, that's a really good question. So, I mean, I've got to be careful what I say, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. But mm. if someone is selling the house that they own, right, that's probably a conflict of interest. So if I'm selling you a house, but I've built the house and I've done all that, mm. um, you probably, you know, so if I'm, you know, there's probably not that separation or that independence, you know, at least with a real estate agent, right? They don't own that house that they're selling. They're mm. just selling on behalf of a client. But the question is, who do you trust, right? Because if you look at the sales sort of cycle, right, you've, you've talked to an advisor about your KiwiSaver, you talk to a mortgage broker about getting approved or your bank about being mm. approved, right? Um, but then you go on the other side, you've got, you've got the real estate agent who's in the middle, You've also got the solicitor, all right, which is another fancy word for lawyer. Mm. They're the ones who really should be uh, protecting you. Mm. But no one's actually, you know, like the mortgage broker, they're paid by the bank. Mm. So their job is to get you the lending. It's not necessarily to make sure the house is the best one for you. Mm. Now, obviously, our mortgage brokers do try and help, and that's what they you know, want to do. But that's not really, really their job. And then, well, the real estate agent doesn't work for you. They work for the person who's selling the house. Yeah. So as much as they feel like they do work for you, they don't. So that's one thing that a lot of people need to realize is that real estate agents aren't neutral, okay? They work for the seller. They do not work for the buyer. Mm. Now, you will get some comments. Blue Wave Ngalu Moana. We are focused on providing digital solutions for our Pacific people. With a creative team that incorporates Pacifica values and cultures, there are no limitations. We offer a variety of digital media solutions that cater to Pacific peoples. With over 10 years experience in graphic design and photography, we take pride in creating art with a Pacific focus. We also specialize in filming, editing, and live streaming. A digital media company serving our Pacifica families, Pacifica businesses, and Pacifica communities. Blue Wave Ngalumuana. Live and breathe Pacific. Now you will get some comments going, oh, but I'm a buyer's agent. I I work for so-and-so agency and I help my clients. All right, all right, one person. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, calm down. But they're really only doing that to get the listing, Mm -hmm. right? And then, okay, solicitor. You know, well, your solicitor's job is to make sure the contract's correct and that you understand the mortgage, you understand the property, you understand mm. all that. But unless they're a very property-focused lawyer, mm. they're not going to be really there to hold your hand. So there right. is a bit of gap that, you know, who do I hold, who holds my hand the whole way through? Yeah. Um, and, and in New Zealand, that is traditionally more a mortgage broker who does that. So a really good mortgage broker will coach you through that sort of stuff. Mm. A very, very good real estate agent might be able. Um, and then you do get these people who are property coaches, property consultants mm. and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, for me, I think just a good financial advisor and a good mortgage broker and then an independent lawyer 
should be enough. But, okay. you know, um, it is a you learn as you go experience. You'll find mm. that your first home, you make all the mistakes and hopefully your second home slightly less. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's good to have someone like myself that you can just call and say, hey, you know, the real estate agents come back. They've said we've got 10 days for finance, 10 days for limb. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, mm. or oh, we're making an offer of 900000 mm. Um you know, how much of a deposit do I have to put down? Yeah. You know, like you probably don't realise that, uh, you know, real estate agents will push for a deposit. That's because that's where their commission comes out from, yeah, it's, right? It's, yeah. You don't actually have to put down, a, if, the, if the seller agrees to a lower deposit, right, you can get away with a lower deposit when mm. entering a negotiation on a contract. But the real estate agent, they want to make sure there's enough there to cover their commissions because yeah. they can take it out from the deposit once the house goes what's called unconditional. Yeah. You know, like what's a conditional offer? What's an unconditional offer? Mm. You know, I didn't know any of this stuff. Like when I was first buying houses, I was just making every mistake but trying to learn. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, you've got to know who to talk to and, and what and how yeah. to just take all advice with a bit of grain of salt, as they say. Um, but, yeah, so first step mm. is how do we get you looking good in front of a bank? Well, banks want to see a few things. So here's a couple of rules of thumb. You can borrow roughly five to six times your annual salary, okay? So if you make, just to make the numbers easy, $100,000 a year, you'll be able to borrow around $500,000, mm -hmm. okay? So if if you earn 60 and your partner earns 60, okay, well, that's 120, 120 times five, whatever that equals, probably mm -hmm. about 600,000, okay? So you can expect to have a mortgage of plus minus $600,000. You then have what's called your deposit, which will go on top. Now, mm. banks, the bigger your deposit, the more likely it is that they'll say yes to your to your home loan, to mm. your mortgage, right? And that's because if the house price falls by 10%, but you've put a 20% deposit in, mm. the bank's money's safe, mm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. They know that you could sell the house, you'll lose your 10, mm. but there's still 10% fat in the deal before they start losing any of their money. Right. right? Because remember, the banks aren't your friends. Like, that's like that's the first thing to remember. They're not. Yeah. And, and banks are there to make money, first mm. and foremost, right? And you'll see in the news lately, oh, the banks are making all this profit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's what they're designed to do. Mm. Don't hate them because of it. Mm. Again, learn how to work the, the game. game. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, so, you know, so if I go and buy a house and I'm only putting in a 5% deposit, mm. which you can do in certain situations on the right day, but don't don't count on it. If the house prices fall by 5%, guess what? The bank's going, oh, crap, you stop paying the mortgage, we could lose money here. Mm. Eh, not going to do that, right? But for first home buyers, you know, 10% is a good sort of first place to get to. Um, but the closer to 20%, the easier it becomes. Mm. Okay, so mm. if you want to buy a $800,000 house, 10% is 80000 bucks. Right, so you need to get eighty thousand dollars together before we will even really start to look at, you know, getting you what's called pre-approved, mm. which is like someone saying, "Yes, you yeah. can buy a mortgage, and here's the amount you can go up to," right? But if you can get a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred forty thousand, which sounds like a big number, it's just going to make it easier and right. easier and easier for that mortgage broker to get you um, a, a pre-approval. Mm. So you come to the mortgage broker; they're going to say they're going to fill out an application form. This is where you have to show them, hey, here's how much I earn. Mm. Now, if you are a an employee, i.e., uh, you know, your taxes come out before uh, you're paid, so not self-employed, it's a lot easier. If you're self-employed, the mm. bank go, that's risky. What happens if you don't get any more work next week? We're yeah. left with a house that we might not want to own. Mm. Okay? So it is much easier if you have full-time employment and a good history of full-time employment. Someone who's just started on a ninety grand, you know, um, salary, um, you know, is 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 isn't maybe look as good as someone who's on an eighty grand salary, but who's been at the same workplace for five, six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. you know, good good history of employment. Okay, but if someone's just gone out and started their own business, it's real hard, real hard to buy a home. Okay, and yeah. and that's something you might want to consider. So mm -hmm. if your goal is buying a home, <coughs> don't go start that business. Right, buy the home. For real? So what's your advice then to business owners who yeah. want to get into ownership? Like, right. and what if you made a really good sale and mm. you got like 160K profit and you went to the bank and you were like, yeah. but your sales were like fluctuating going through the first five years, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you go to the bank, you're like, I got 160K cash today. 
Cash, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the more cash, the better. But mm-hmm. they'll look at your history. They'll say, show us your last two or three years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if that shows, hey, you made good money the last two or three years, then yes, we will get you into a home, no problem. Yeah. Um, but if you've only been self-employed for six months and like most right, self-employed right. people, mm-hmm. yeah, the business hasn't making any money yet or, you know, mm-hmm. like you haven't proven that you've made any money, mm-hmm. then it is tricky. You're, you're a high-risk person because the bank's just looking to give, you know, the loan to the lowest-risk person they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Definitely, if you're about to buy a home or you're thinking, I'm about to start my own business, get the home first. It is so much easier if you're an employee with a good, you know, employment. That's that's step one. Yeah. The second thing that the bank will look at is what's your character? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have to show them your bank statements. Yeah. Right? And they probably have, like, profiles of, like, personalities uh, of different absolutely. people. Absolutely. They see <laughs> Uber Eats. Yeah. Um, you know, oh. like, uh, finance companies, yeah. you know, stuff like that. After pay. After pay. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff, right? But that's the thing. This is like home ownership's easy, but it has to be a priority, right? Right. And so like sometimes I'd meet clients like back in the day and I'd say, oh, you know, what are, you, what are your financial goals? Oh, we want to buy a house. And I go, great. How much deposit do you have saved? Oh, nothing. Don't lie to me then. You, yeah. you don't want to buy a house. Mm. Yeah, you, you know, you, you're, t- you're telling me you want to buy a house, but you don't want to buy a house. Mm. Yeah. If you want to buy a house, when I say, oh, how much have you got saved? You say, oh, I've got $45,000 in my KiwiSaver. We've got $10,000 in cash. Mm. We haven't bought anything, you know, silly or on credit cards or on perch, high purchase or afterpays, mm. you know, for the last year. We have no dumb debt, which is consumer debt. So that is things like Harvey Norman or mm. um, instant finance and all that kind of stuff, mm. right? Oh, okay, you actually want to buy a house. Mm. That's what you're telling me, yeah. right? And that's how the bank will look at it. Do you actually want to own a home? Mm. Because everyone will tell you they want to own a home. Mm. Yeah. Right? But then when it comes to proving it, it's... Yeah, yeah. prove it. You want to buy it? How much, how much money you got saved? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how I always cut through clients who are a waste of time. I yeah. feel attacked. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, but, but maybe that's the feeling you need to go, actually, exactly. yeah. actually maybe I'm lying to myself. Mm. You know, yeah. it's cool to talk about buying a house, but you know what's cooler? Buying a house. And owning one. Owning it is better than talking about it. And I wanted to peel this right back. Like you've explained to us the entire process of KiwiSaver, why it's important and how it's possible to own a home, Um, especially uh, looking at this from a bus speaker lens, you know, how we all Mm -hmm. um, stay in one home or Mm -hmm. we're comfortable living together. Yeah. But let's peel this right back, Um, putting on your financial advisor um, hat. How important is it as an independent member of society Mm -hmm. to be actively learning about investment, about home ownership and finances. Mm. Oh, it's so important. Yeah. 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 So, mm. I mean, at the end of the day, that's your security, right? Yeah. You know, um, understanding, you know, hey, you always got a home if you own it, right? You're never going to be pushed out. You're yeah. never going to be, you know, yeah, in, a, in a sticky situation. Mm. And obviously being smart with your money has benefits, right? You know, if your kid is sick, you've got more money to fix them. If your kid gets into trouble with the law, you've got more money to, for a better lawyer, right? Mm-hmm. Like there is, uh, you know, we talked about mould in the houses, mm-hmm. right? If you've got money, you can either move to a better house or get in a ventilation system mm-hmm. and a heat pump and all that sort of stuff. So... You know, and hey, do you go to the butcher to buy the nice meat or do you go to wherever and buy the yeah. off-cut seconds that's no good for your family's health? You know, yeah. are you buying the better fruits and vegetables or are you skipping the fruits and vegetables this week because, you know, it's cheaper to buy the frozen chips mm. or something, you know, mm. and that's what the kids want, you know, but yeah. it's not necessarily what's good for them. So there's definitely a benefit to being, you know, smarter with your finances. Mm. And what people don't realise is, you know, I've got friends who make 200 grand a year and are really bad with their money and have basically nothing to show for it. I have other friends who make 60, 70, 80K a year and they're already in a home and they're already thinking about the next home because Mm. they're a lot smarter with their money, Mm. right? So, you know, and I'm I'm lucky. I was just born, you know, like uh, good with money. Mm. Even since I was in high school, I was always saving money. You know, for me, saving money is like a real... I don't know, I get a lot of thrill out of saving right. money. You know, I don't like spending money mm. uh, unless it's on something that's important. Mm. Um, and, you know, and, and you've got to think about the future. You mm. know, like what do you want your future to look like? Do you want to have your own home? Mm. If so, all right, it's going to take work. It's going to take discipline. Mm. But you've got to know what you're doing so we can make it happen. Mm-hmm. But then also look past your first home. Mm. Like obviously, you've bought your second home, which is great. My sister, yeah. Yeah, well, you and your sister, yeah. it's still yeah. part of, you know, it's still you as a family mm. unit. That's really cool. But then what does your retirement look like, right? Mm. Do you want to work till you die or you'd like to actually have a few years at the end where you can have some options, do mm. some travelling, 
you know, if you're into giving back, you know, volunteering your time because you can. You don't yeah. have to be, you know, working 40, 50 hours a week just to pay bills, right? Yeah. So. I think I think the mindset as well for our Pacifica people, and it comes back to um, you don't take anything when you're when you're gone, right? And I think that a lot of that, and, and I'm and I'm going to be quite honest, and that Please was be, my yeah. mindset, um, you know, and that's how I was kind of like, you know, um, give. You 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 need to give with your heart because if you don't give, you know, what what's what does this, all this mean when you could die tomorrow and you're not going to enjoy it? And that was kind of like the mindset. My mindset quickly changed when I had children, mm-hmm. um, you know, and although I own my own home, um, and yes, congratulations to my sister, you know, who has used our first home to purchase that, our second home or her second home, but I'm still in, I'm still drowning in, in a lot of debt mm-hmm. because I haven't been quite clever with my money. Mm-hmm. Um, probably a few months ago, I've changed my mindset. I want to be smarter with my money. I've now finally, I said to Ryan the other day, I'm looking at my account and it is it's such a good feeling to finally see a big bulk of money. I'm like, yeah, I saved that. Yeah. Um, but how, you know, you probably don't have the answer, but is there a way to kind of change that mindset for our Pacifica people? Do you think? Or any advice? Yeah, no, and and it's it's not easy, right? Mm. And um, so... What I what I did, and I still do it to this day, mm. is I, I set up lots of bank accounts, like lots of suffixes, right? So you know you normally have your OO account, which yeah, is yeah. your income mm-hmm. account, and that's where your like pay goes into. Yep. I, I'd have like five suffixes. You know, one says car, one says travel, one says house, one says, you know, future uh, future mm. assets or whatever. Yep. And every single week when I get paid, I, I shovel as much money out of those account, out of my OO account, into those things, right? Mm-hmm. And then I live off whatever's left on the in, the in the OO account. I don't do it the other way around. I don't spend everything for the week, and if there's anything left over, then shovel it in. Mm-hmm. So every time I get paid, um, yeah, it's just you know money would go into this account. I also only give myself a small budget, right? I've recently had to give myself a pay rise, but for years <laughs> and years, I lived off 150 bucks a week, not including rent and stuff. Okay. So, so not including rent, but just 150 bucks for uh, lunches, coffees. Uh, yep. I could save up within that 150 bucks for clothing, mm. but I could spend that money on anything I wanted, right? So there's no, I, I, it was guilt free spending, but it was only 150 bucks a week. So mm. it meant that everything else was either a bill for mm. living, which in my case was a mortgage, mm. um, or it's put into a saving. That's a lot of discipline, man. That's like a new pair of like Jordan shoes. Every week. Or a new game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but <laughs> what, you, do you want to live in those shoes and exactly. live in that game? Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You've just said it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. live in those and shoes? And you know how yeah. shoes is like a big thing, eh? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. like even my family, like... I think Honestly. that's what you've just you've just said it. Do you want to live in that shoes? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to live <laughs> yeah. in, in in that um car? Yeah. Do you want to live in that yeah. um deep fryer? Yeah, exactly. Air fryer. <laughs> yeah. Deep fryer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Air, fryer. air fryer. Yeah. You're right. That's yeah, yeah. all it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's, I don't. And that's the thing, right? Like 150 bucks a week. If you make 60, 80 k, you've got more than that coming in after bills. That yes. You, you know. Yeah. Um. So it is about being disciplined, but having a reason. So uh, you know, if if and in this case, I think you should have an account. This is. Home deposit. Yeah. Every single day, you every single week you get paid, you just shovel as much money as that into that as you can, and you just don't touch it. Mm. If you really have to, set it up at a different bank that you don't have internet banking for, mm. right? And you have to go into the bank to get money out of it. Yeah. Yes. You know, don't yeah, touch it. Done. Right. Yeah. So that's a really good good option yeah. option as well. Um. You know, and, and, and then just you know. Like I, I'd always pay myself less than I get paid, mm. right? Because so I was quite lucky when I started work. I started to earn good money quite quickly, but I'd still just pay myself like I made sixty grand a year. Mm. You know, I might have been making one hundred and eighty grand a year, but if I started thinking like I had a hundred grand, guess what? I have nothing, right? Yeah. If I started spending like I make one hundred and eighty grand a year, it's like whoa. Mm. You know, I might look rich on social media, but I'd be broke, yeah, right? Yeah. And for me, like my mentality has always been: have it, don't show it. Right, because if you start flashing it, guess what? More problems. Come. Hey, bro, my car <laughs> broke down. Mm. Oh, hey, ones, auntie he's died. Changed a bit. You know? hey, <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, and, and you will lose friends because of it, yeah. right? If you if you start to show money, but that's that's not to say that it's not a good idea. Like you should focus on getting a good income, right? Mm. And like it's way easier to buy a house and make money and have a good life if you make one hundred and fifty grand a year than mm. it is on fifty. Right, yeah. that's just a fact. 
Mm. But, you know, you've got to be super disciplined if you're in those lower incomes. But even in the, you know, the higher incomes, like you can make a bit more mistakes, but you still need to be fairly disciplined to make it happen. But again, if you're thinking about like which career you're going to get into, get into something that you one day will get up to a good income, mm-hmm. you know, um, especially like all, all this generation, right? Mm-hmm. You all went to school in New Zealand. You all went to the same high yep. school as I went to. So there's no excuse for you not getting a good job, mm-hmm. right? You've just got to make it a, a priority. Mm-hmm. So a good job is definitely a, a good start. It's much easier. But then it's that disciplined and savings. Because mm-hmm. again, if a bank sees it, you've been able to put 20 grand aside this year and you've got $25,000 in your KiwiSaver and your sister's done the same, mm. they're going to give you a house, yeah. right? And if you've got 20 grand saved in cash and you go, oops, I went into Harvey Norman and, you know, bought that new lounge suite, hey, you'll be <laughs> pissed because you'll have to move $3,000 out of your hard-earned savings yeah. mm. to pay back that dumb Harvey Norman loan they gave you mm. because you don't want that, you know, yeah. you know, making you mm. look bad in front of mm. the banks, Right and charging you interest and fees yeah. and all that crap. <laughs> so just don't ever take finance. If you can't afford that TV, don't buy it. Like, just don't buy it. Go to your friend's house who has a nice TV. So, like, in my circles of friends, right? <laughs> Facebook we, Marketplace sells TVs for 150 bucks. Just get, get, <laughs> get, get, but get rid of it. Well, either buy that or don't even get yeah, rid of Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Like, even that 150 bucks, do you really need it? Yeah, just yeah. go to your friend's house and got a TV. So, like, yeah. in my friend's <laughs> circles, right? My friends are starting to buy boats, right? Yeah. Mm. And I think a boat is the biggest waste of money ever. You I know, think like, they were, like, a huge investment or something. They're, like, 200,000, 300,000 mm. bucks, right? Yeah. Mm. And that's cool. My mates can have them, and when they go out, I'll just come along and give a hundred bucks for gas or whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to spend three hundred thousand dollars on a boat, yeah, and like just to keep up with them or you know have one in my driveway. Mm-mm. I'd rather mm. buy another house that's going to give me future income, right? Yes. You yeah. know, I, I like my goal is I, I want to put my money into investments so one day I don't have to physically show up and work. The investments just pay me enough money to go do what I like to do, mm. right? And that's the options that we're trying to get. Shucks. Thank you so I, much, honestly. I do have one more question. Just because I know that our, our Pacifica community mm-hmm. are probably curious. Yeah. And let's just use, so if you're earning from approximately around 60 to 80K yeah. a year and you're uh, a young family of yeah. three, for example. just Three adults or like two, mum and dad and a kid? Mum and dad and three children. Or just, okay. um, just to... You know, so that's we're not just... a family of three, yeah. <laughs> sorry, a family, sorry, a family of um, five. Okay. Um, two, you know, mum and dad, three children. Yeah. They're very young. I know nice. that with yeah. our um, banks, they are cautious when they when it comes to young families providing, yeah. you know, finance. Just an approximate, like, a five-year plan, we'll just go for a five-year plan. Mm-hmm. Approximately how much would you suggest that our families save yeah. um, a week? Yeah. And that's if mum and dad are earning approximately around 60 to 80 Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's say mum earns 80 and dad earns 60. Mm. You know, back in the day we used to always say it's the other way. But yeah, these yeah. Days, yeah, yeah we're it's doing, changed. Yeah, so mum earns 80, dad earns 60, so that's $140,000 a year, mm. right? Yeah. We say the kids are at primary school age. Primary school. Yeah, okay, because yep. that's actually easier because you don't have all the, like, um, you know, childcare and mm. all that sort of cost, which is yep. really exp- – it's actually cheaper it's, when they go to primary school. Yes, it is. Um, or that's when you lean on grandma to mm. look after kids rather than paying for it if you can, especially yep. if, you know, grandma and granddad aren't working. Mm. They become good babysitters. So, you know, use that if you can. But, okay, so they make $140,000 a year. Um, so, you know, that's over a couple thousand bucks a week after tax they're getting mm. paid. So let's say they're getting paid $2,000. Yeah which is good. Mm. And just double check me on that. I don't earn 140 grand, so I don't know how much that is exactly after tax per week. Do you know, does anyone know? Can we work that out? Go to paye.net and tells you. But let's say I know if, if you make 100 grand a year, it's about $1,600 a week yep. um, after tax. So let's say this family makes $2,000 a week. Mm. All right. The old like rule of thumb yeah. And this is what one old nine four zero. One nine four zero. It was yeah. pretty good. One mm-hmm. nine four zero. Okay, let's make it two thousand just so my numbers are easy. Mm. But the old rule of thumb was always try and live off one income, right? And save one. So whoever mm. it is, you know, so let's say the mum makes eighty, all right, let's live off the eighty K, but we save dad sixty. Right? And sixty K after tax is gonna be about a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, that's one thing I got right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But what that also generally does mm. is that means that, uh, you know, if you have another kid, you can still survive off one income mm. for a little while with the kid's young and stuff like that. So if they're earning 2000 bucks a week, right, my goal would be saving $1,000 a week, you know, okay. and I would be going, all right, can we feed, you know, because 600 bucks of that's going to rent, mm. right? So you've got 400 bucks a week. 
For food and petrol. For food, petrol, groceries, everything. Yeah. So maybe you need 500 bucks a week, right? Mm. You know, but you don't want to go and spend 350 bucks, 400 bucks on crap. You don't yeah. want to take the kids out for a hundred dollars for, you know, even going to like, like I went to Burger Fuel the other day. Just That's so me, expensive. Me and my son. It's like almost 50 bucks. Yeah. Mm. I was like, just for your combo. Like, he doesn't even eat much. <laughs> like, you know, like, what is this? And that's, but that's a huge amount of money when yeah. you could eat at home mm. and it costs $20, you know? Um, so you got it. But, but that's the thing. Mm. Do you want to go to Burger Fuel all the time or do you want to own a home? Right? And yes, this family, because they have good incomes, 2000 bucks a week is good money. Mm. They could save $200 a week. But 200 bucks a week, it's going to take a long time to yeah. get there. But if you're showing you can so you know save eight hundred to a thousand bucks a week, right, and just put it in that other bank account, you can't see as soon mm. as you know one of them gets paid, it goes straight in that bank account. Mm. Then suddenly at the end of the year, guess what? You've got forty or fifty thousand dollars. This is after their Kiwi Savers have come out. So if mm. they've been in Kiwi Saver for five years, right, they're probably going to have twenty, thirty, or forty thousand bucks each in their Kiwi Saver. So this family, within five years of being in Kiwi Saver. Probably has twenty to thirty thousand bucks each. Mm. So let's say fifty grand Kiwi mm. Saver, uh, five years, mm. and even even if they just save five hundred dollars a week, twenty five grand a year, five years they've got one hundred twenty five grand. Yeah. So what's mm. that? One hundred twenty five plus fifty, one hundred seventy five thousand bucks. Seems... Right. Mm. We we got them in a house two years ago, mm. not five years. You yeah. know. Mm. But that's the thing, and they only make sixty to eighty k. Mm. But definitely having two people in a house working makes it so much easier. Right. I've always been jealous of my friends who have wives who earn really good money mm. because it makes life way easier. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's always a nice idea to have one family member at home, but not in, not in New Zealand, not on our way yeah, and not how expensive yeah. Auckland is. It's yep. just it's a dream that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, encourage your girlfriend to get a good job because <laughs> it, that's, you know, that's what you want, right? Mm, for sure. So, so, that, so a family like that, you know, you can make it. It's not that hard. Yeah. Mm. But KiwiSaver is that savings that's happening in the background, so that's really good. And then it's just transferring that 500 bucks a week into a savings account for a couple of years. Do not touch it. Would you recommend yeah. like... Just pretend it's not yours. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I'd love to give you some money, but I've checked my account after all the money's gone that I've put into my savings mm. and I've got zero. Sorry, sorry, can't help you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Staying back to the example of the, the couple and the kids, mm -hmm. and you say they should save $1,000 a week. Yeah, maybe that's – I'm pretty stingy, so, yeah. Let, but that's why I changed <laughs> no, it no, to $500 no, yeah. a week. Mm -hmm. okay, I, I would save 1000 a week yeah. because, you know, like my son doesn't cost us any – he doesn't eat much food. Like, right. It, you know, the, the only expensive thing about having a son was that that, that my partner didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, I was losing her income. Mm -hmm. But as soon as she was back to work, kids aren't that expensive. Yeah. Because he doesn't wear – Air Jordans or fancy right. designer clothes. You know, he's four. Guilty. He can't tell what clothes he wears, yeah. you know, but he lives in a very, very nice house, yeah. you know, and if I die, he's sorted, right? Mm. Yeah. And I think that's, I think he's going to thank me later on when he goes, oh, thanks, Dad, I went to a good school, got to go on, like, all the school trips and, mm. you yeah. know, isn't like, oh, man, I looked good when I was four wearing those, you know, $100 shoes or whatever. Yeah. 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 No, he buys secondhand clothes. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't care. He's a boy. He's four. Yeah. He's gonna get muddy and crap in it anyway. Yeah, right. I think yeah. It, um, from what you're wow. saying, it just requires a lot of discipline. But thank you so much, Simon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like this should be a, like a continuous like financial advising so. thingy. I think this the advice that you've given us has been so helpful. Yeah, um, and really puts it into like perspective yeah. of how we should be living um, our lives. And it's more than just saving. It's how we what we eat, mm. yeah. what we're buying. It's who we are. Yeah, mm. and it That's and you know, deep, yeah. and, and it doesn't mean you can don't don't have to stop being a nice person or a good person. You know, give your time to people rather than your money. You know, like, and and if you get yourself into a really good financial situation, then you can actually help your friends and family a lot more, mm. right? So the short term, hey, maybe I can't help. I'm sorry. We're saving for that goal. We want to be in a family home by Christmas next year. Mm. I wish I could help. But five years, ten years later, you might be able to go, you know what, I can help you really help you now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually a powerful thing. So look for the sort of long term, you know, take a long term approach to it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's 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 possible. That's the main yeah. thing. So can I say where to find me and all yeah, that sort of, of stuff? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's literally what I was going to ask next. So just to that camera there, oh, yeah. um, last words I'll and where people can myself. sign up. <laughs> um, yeah, so so first thing is you want to get your KiwiSaver sorted. So go to aurora.co.nz and um, hit up the contact uh, form. So what we will do is we'll give you advice around what's the right KiwiSaver for you. So it's a real easy, it's about a 10 to 15 minute chat with one of our advisors. 
process. They'll give you a call. It's all done digitally. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, so don't worry about that. They're all super friendly. They're all really nice. And they'll start talking to you about, yeah, getting your, your KiwiSaver sorted. Um, and then from there, we start looking at how do we get you into your first home. And that's when our mortgage advisors can reach out. Um, and so, yeah, just get in touch. Uh, Aurora.co.nz is the easiest way. Otherwise, I think we're on Instagram. So go to our Instagram and just DM us there. Uh, I'm Simon, so I'm on Instagram as well. You can hit me up. Um, I'm pretty happy to help you out. So, yeah, just, just go to our website, look after us, you know, look out for us. And, yeah, hopefully we can help you get into your first homes. And, you know, massive shout out and thanks mm -hmm. to you guys for bringing me in here. So hopefully, you know, I think we should set a bit of a target maybe. Can we get yep. 10 people from this show? into homes next year maybe more 50 <laughs> yeah, people yeah. Mm. Yeah. you know like i don't know how many people are listening today but if you've got a job um you're working hard and you want to get into a first home we can make it happen mm. but don't tell me it's a priority show me it's a priority mm. right so when we ask how much money you got even if it's five thousand dollars two thousand yeah. dollars it's a start right um and with a start, we can continue that and grow from that. And then, yeah, we're happy to help you along the way and get more uh, Pacifica people into homes. That would be really good, mm. um, you know, and let's be the generation that changes that, right? Yeah. You know, that's that would be really cool. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me here today. Man, it's been awesome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> awesome. Mm.